Hello everyone, welcome back to MG Cloud. This video is going to be about AWS Solution Architect Associate. We are going to deal with the practice of this exam. In this session, we have a total of 500 questions and this is our first session where we are going to practice the questions from 1 to 5. So let us begin. Question 1. A company wants to migrate a legacy web application from an on-premises data center to AWS. The web application consists of a web tire, an application tire, and a MySQL database. The company does not want to manage instances or clusters. Which combination of services should a solutions architect include in the overall architecture? You have to select two options. So go ahead. You have 10 seconds. Okay, time up. Now let us analyze the answers. Option 2, Amazon Kinesis Data Streams is for data processing and analytics, not suitable for this web application. So this is the wrong answer. Option 3, Amazon DynamoDB is a NoSQL database, not suitable for MySQL applications. Okay, wrong answer. Option 5, Amazon EC2 Spot Instances requires managing instances which the company wants to avoid. So, wrong answer. Option 1, Amazon RDS for MySQL allows the company to migrate their MySQL database without managing instances or clusters. So this is what we want. Correct answer. Now another correct answer is AWS Fargate. Why? Because it enables containerized applications, uh, web applications and app tires without managing instances or clusters. Amazon RDS for MySQL and AWS Fargate are the correct answers for this question. Question 2. A web application runs in public and private subnets. The application architecture consists of a web tire and database tire running on Amazon EC2 instances. Both tires run in a single availability zone. Which combination of steps should a solutions architect take to provide high availability for this architecture? You have to select two options. Okay, uh, the options uh, need a little bit of processing so you can take some more time. But your time starts now. Time up. Now let us analyze the answers. Option 3. Add the existing web application instances to an auto-scaling group behind an application load balancer, ALB. This option is not correct because it doesn't necessarily span multiple assets which is availability zones okay wrong answer option four create new public and private subnets in the same az for high availability doesn't provide high availability across multiple assets okay so this is also the wrong answer option five uh, create new public and private subnets in a new az uh, create a database using amazon ec2 in one az this also doesn't provide the same level of high availability as RDS multi az deployment. So wrong answer once more. Okay, option one, create new public and private subnets in the same VPC, each in a new availability zone. Migrate the database to Amazon RDS multi uh, az deployment. This creates new subnets in a new az and moves the database to a multi az RDS deployment, ensuring the database is highly available. This is what we want. So this is one correct answer. And another correct answer is create an Amazon EC2 auto scaling group and application load balancer, which is ALB spanning multiple availability zones. Why this is a correct answer? Because it creates an auto scaling group and ALB that spans multiple AZs, ensuring the web tire is highly available and can distribute traffic across availability zones. Okay, so this is the second correct answer. All right. Now our third question, a company recently experienced a database outage uh, in its on-premises data center. The company now wants to migrate to a reliable database solution on AWS that minimizes data loss and stores every transaction on at least uh, two nodes. 
which of the following solutions meets these requirements so go ahead you have 10 seconds the options are quite huge so if you want to take some more time you can anyways your time starts now Time up. Now let us analyze the answers. Option 1. Set up an RDS MySQL DB instance and then create a read replica in another availability zone that synchronously replicates the data. This is close, but read replicas in RDS are asynchronous, not synchronous. Alright, so this is one wrong answer. Option 2, set up an EC2 instance with a MySQL DB engine installed that triggers an AWS Lambda function to synchronously replicate the data to RDS MySQL DB instance. This option is incorrect. Why? Because EC2 instances and Lambda functions are not designed for synchronous database replication. Right? So this is another wrong answer. Option 3. Set up an RDS MySQL DB instance and then create a read replica in a separate AWS region that synchronously replicates the data. This option is incorrect because synchronous replication across regions is not possible in RDS. Okay, it's not possible. So, wrong answer. Now, option 4. Set up an RDS MySQL DB instance with multiple uh, AZ functionality enabled to synchronously replicate the data. Uh... This is correct. Why? Because the company wants to minimize data loss and store every transaction on at least two nodes. RDS SQL DB instance with multi AZ functionality enabled synchronously replicates data across two or more availability zones, which ensures data is written to multiple nodes. This solves our purpose, right? So option four is the correct answer. Question 4. An e-commerce company uses Microsoft Active Directory to provide users and groups with access to resources on the on-premises infrastructure. The company has extended its IT infrastructure to AWS in the form of hybrid cloud. The engineering team at the company wants to run directory-aware workloads on AWS for a SQL server-based application. All right. The team also wants to configure a trust relationship to enable single sign on uh, for its users to access resources in either domain. All right. As a solution architect, which of the following AWS services would you recommend for this use case? OK, your four options and 10 seconds. Your time starts now. Yeah, time up. Now, let us analyze the answers. Option 1, Simple AD is a lightweight directory service, but it's not compatible with Microsoft Active Directory. Okay, so this is the wrong answer. Option 3, AD connector is used to connect AWS services to an on-premises Active Directory, but it's not a full Active Directory service. Right, so wrong answer. Option 4, Amazon Cloud Directory is a directory service for AWS resources but it's not compatible with microsoft active directory so yeah wrong answer option two aws managed microsoft ad uh, this option is correct why because the company already uses microsoft active directory on premises and they want to extend it to aws this is the purpose aws managed microsoft ad provides a managed active directory in the aws cloud which can be trusted by the on-premises Active Directory, enabling single sign-on, which is SSO, and directory-aware workloads. Option 2, AWS Manage Microsoft AD solves the purpose. That is the correct answer. I hope you had liked this session. Please comment your score below in the comments. Okay? And if you want to visit uh, our playlist of AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam, you can go and visit it. And most importantly, congratulations for answering five questions today. Don't forget to give yourself a pat on the back. And yes, like this video, subscribe to our channel. I'll meet you in the next video. Till then, keep learning, keep practicing and stay tuned. Bye-bye.
बाय